So let's take a look at example number five and continue to try to practice this idea of implicit differentiation. And we come across now the example that we had looked at before of x to the third plus y to the third is equal 6xy. And there's no easy way to solve this to say y equals. So it's going to be really hard to take any of the old approaches of finding a portion of uh, this curve that is a little function and find a formula for it in order to find slopes of tangent lines. So instead, we're going to try to take this implicit differentiation approach. So let's go ahead and at least get started on this together. If I want to find this derivative, remember that oops, the first thing that I'm going to have to do is to take the derivative with respect to x of both sides. Now keep in mind, I'm treating y here like it again is going to be an unspecified, it's an unknown formula that contains a bunch of x's. So I have to keep in mind that every time I see a y right now, I'm imagining y equals a whole bunch of stuff with x. Okay, so let's start by taking the derivative over here on the left side. This side's pretty easy. Again, I can start with using the sum rule. So I'll start with x cubed. So that's easy, you just use the power rule. I get 3x squared. Now over here, I have to be a little careful. This isn't variable to the third. This is complicated mystery formula to the third. And so that's, that's like stuff to the third. And I'm going to have to use chain rule. I'm going to have three stuff to the second, and then chain rule, derivative of the stuff. And remember, I'm going to write that derivative as dy dx as opposed to y prime, so I don't get confused with y primes and y's to the first power. Now on the other side here, I have to be even more careful because I'll notice that I actually have several things that are being multiplied together. Remember, if y is a mystery formula that contains x's, this right-hand side might look something like 6x sine x or 6x e to the x, right? Like depending on what that value of y gets replaced with. So I should recognize here that what I really need to use is a product rule on this side because I have kind of two different functions. I have a 6x, which I'll group together as one thing, and I have a y. So I'm going to use product rule here. So I'll start by taking the derivative of, um, let's say, I take the derivative of 6x. So that's going to be just 6, and I leave the other function alone. Now I'll leave the 6x alone, and I'll just take the derivative of my mystery formula. Well, I don't know what my mystery formula is, so the best I can do is state that its derivative would be represented by dy dx. Okay, so I I'm pretty much done. All I have to do now is attempt to solve for dy dx. Now I'm going to actually ask you here to pause the video and see, can you solve for dy dx? Notice that you have two copies of it here, and so you might have to think back to the skills check where we talked about what we could do if we wanted to solve for a variable when it has multiple occurrences occurring within an equation. Go ahead, pause the video here, and unpause to see me work through the solution. Okay, well, hopefully you went ahead and did this. What you should have seen is that what you could do is take all of your terms that have dy dx and move them all to one side of the equation. Everything without a dy dx, you could slide to the other side. So I moved my 3x squared over to the right and the 6x dy dx over to the left. Now I can take this dy dx and I can factor it out from the left-hand side. That would leave me with this. And now I can just divide by that entire set of brackets. So 6y minus 3x squared, 3y squared minus 6x. So this right here is a perfectly valid derivative dy dx. Now, it's possible that you may have um, moved your dy dx's to the other side of the equal sign, and that's actually totally okay. Um, if you did do that, you should have pretty much the exact same thing, except what you'll notice is that your top probably has 3x squared and 6y in opposite orders. Like, you could multiply my top by negative 1. 
And you might also notice the same thing in your denominator, that if you multiplied my denominator by negative 1, it would match yours. But if I multiply the top and the bottom of my answer by negative 1, I really just multiplied by nothing, right? I multiplied by just 1 itself, because I get negative 1 over negative 1 is just 1. So our answers are actually the same, even though they might look a little bit different. Now, technically, you could also do a little bit more simplification here with some um, factoring of uh, a 3 from top and bottom. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and actually do that here just to clean this up, make this a little bit smaller. If I factor a 3 out from top and bottom, I think I would be left with this. Oops, that should be a 2. And uh, this might make it easier to work with if I'm going to go ahead and plug in any numbers a little bit later on. Okay, great. Well, let's take a look then at part B. I want to find the equation of a tangent line to this curve at the point 3, 3. So remember, this was this kind of uh, loop-de-looping curve that um, I'm attempting to draw out here. So it works something like this. Um, my y-axis would go right here. My x-axis kind of went in right there. And the point 3, 3 is actually right up here at this, uh, this kind of peak of that little piece. So if I'm interested in finding the equation of that tangent line, again, I know I just need a slope and I need a point. Unfortunately, I already have the point. So I can go ahead and just write this out. My point is already going to be 3, 3. And my slope can be easily found by going to dy dx. And where x and y are, I'm going to plug in 3 and 3. So that would be 2 times 3 minus 3 squared over 3 squared minus 2 times 3. So let's see, I'm going to get 6 minus 9 on top. I'm going to get 9 minus 6 on bottom. And so it looks like I end up with a total slope of negative 1. So the equation of that tangent line is actually here really simple. The equation of the tangent is just going to be y minus 3 is equal to negative 1 times x minus 3. Or I could write that as y is equal to negative x. Let's see, I'm going to have plus 3 plus 6. Negative x plus 6. There we go. I have the equation uh, of that line. All right, so all of this seems to be working pretty easily. The hardest part here is really just understanding how I visualize y as a function with a bunch of x's, just a mystery function, and I got to treat it as such. Well, I have one final question here that's uh, really important to note. What does the derivative actually evaluate to be at the point 0, 0? You'll notice here that the point 0, 0 is actually a point on the curve, and so maybe I want to find the tangent line slope there. Okay, well, let's see. Um, dy dx at that particular point would actually look like, let's see, 2 times 0 minus 0 squared over uh, 0 squared um, and then minus 2 times 0. So I'm going to get uh, 0 over 0. OK. Now, 0 over 0, remember, is not a value, right? Like, that doesn't equate to be 1. That doesn't even necessarily equate to be undefined. It's technically what we call indeterminate. So I don't. I mean, sometimes it, we were, this showed us that we might be able to simplify something that we had, but if I take a look at my derivative, I don't really see any way I might be able to simplify what I'm, uh, what I'm doing here. So we say um, this, uh, I'll say, is an indeterminate value, meaning, so I'll put here that this means that implicit differentiation tells us nothing about the slope of the tangent line at 0, 0 on this curve. 
this is an instance where the implicit differentiation idea is failing. And we can actually go to the picture and probably see why this is. Remember that when I draw tangent lines, they need to be touching a particular point on the curve, but also moving in the same direction as the curve at the time when we draw it. So let's suppose that I was moving starting from this portion of the curve, right? If I was moving this way and I finally arrived at the point in, at 0, 0, I might see that I could maybe sketch a tangent line that looks something kind of like this, right? Because this is like the direction of the curve at the point. But what if I kept going kind of up into this loop and I looped around and I followed the direction of the curve as I hit this point now? Well, now I would get a tangent line that maybe looks like this. So kind of at that point of 0, 0, I actually have like multiple different tangent lines. And this is ultimately why this uh, implicit differentiation is tends to be failing here, is that there's kind of multiple tangent lines at this point. And so in general, I should be able to note, in general, uh, implicit differentiation fails to work for a curve at points of what we would call self-intersection. That is, points where a curve crosses over itself. And so I can see that happening here at 0, 0, and so it's actually no surprise that the derivative here uh, is unable to give me a meaningful value.